I posed a question a couple days ago, and what I asked was, at this point in the year, we're three quarters deep, well into the fourth quarter, which of these three are the number one regret or biggest mistake that leaders recognize as we reflect back on the first three quarters and go into the final corner? And I wanna to talk to you about them. John Cheplak coming to you on an early Thursday morning, about 5.16 a.m. And the three questions I asked was, was the number one regret that you didn't spend enough money on marketing and or any activity that would generate more lead flow? That was question number one. Question number two was your energy and focus and initiative around agent retention. And then number three was staying consistent around recruiting. So let's break these down. Number one, marketing, essentially what I was talking about there was uh, more leads. You know, I just came off from a, uh, a wonderful mastermind that is by no means, I'm really the facilitator, it's not about me. We have wall to wall, two full days of great leaders from throughout North America, peeling documented great leaders who have delivered results um, documented results and uh, pulling back the curtain, taking us inside their organizations and sharing two full days. And then, of course, question and answer after each person spoke. I mean, just a, a very informal, formal environment. Uh, the formalities would be um, higher performance. The informalities being that uh, uh, it was um, not a lot of rigor around dot to dot to dot. Um, uh, two-day event. And what I mean by that is uh, nothing's off limits as far as questions are concerned. You know, I believe in full transparency. And so not once did someone say they needed more leads. Not once. So let's get rid of that one. Number two, sure, retention came up and retention comes up all the time. But nope, that wasn't the number one mistake, regret, or the first three quarters of the year. And I'm not just saying from the conversations at my mastermind, I'm talking about my conversations with over 100 one-on-one -on -one coaching calls a week. Number three, did not stay consistent with recruiting. And it is number three, ladies and gentlemen, and number three, by the way, impact number one and number two. Let me make a crystal clear statement to you and you know, you may say that, geez, you say it all the time, John. Well, you know, I say it all the time. And yet, you know what I hear all the time from people too is I've been listening to you for three years, four years, five years watching you. And I finally got it because what happens is someone gets in your head and gets you down some rabbit hole that pulls you away from recruiting. Let's talk about retention. Okay. See, if you're not continually recruiting, you are a hostage to the people that you have. Let me say it again. If you are not continually recruiting, you're a hostage to the people that you have. And, and here's what I mean. You're going to roll out. I don't mean enforce. I'm talking about roll out standards and expectations that you don't sit up at night thinking, oh, I wanna think of uh, activities and, and uh, expectations on a daily basis that make someone's life miserable. I mean, agents can feel that way, but actually you're scheming at night thinking about how can I give my agents the best opportunity to convert the opportunities that we're giving them. Yet, you know, it feels like top down to them and that's their choice, but it's partially, it's on you though too and how you choreograph it, the language patterns you use. Do you frame your way into conversations? Does it feel bottom up versus top down? But that's a whole other silo of training. Um, leadership language loops is what I call that. Uh, your language patterns. The finesse in which you communicate with a human being, that number one, that, I mean, that's killing a bunch of people's growth. But the, the challenge with, with leads ultimately is getting people to take the consistent proven action steps. And the reason that you're unable to get them to do that is sure there's the human condition, number one, but number two, it's always, can I ratchet it up? Well, you can't ratchet it up 
when you've got a group of people without a steady flow and pressure from the bottom of people coming in that will actually do, like this subculture that will come in and do what you expect the existing culture to do. So without a subculture applying pressure, the existing culture, when there's standards, expectations, accountability, the first thing they think is, ah, that's all right. They're always gonna say this to me, but what can they do? There's so many opportunities here. There's so many people in the database, you know, um, they gotta have people handle it, right? And I'm not saying lead from fear, but you've gotta have tension in the relationship. Recruiting, consistent recruiting applies that tension, period. Number two, where does recruiting impact retention? Well, because here's what happens. What happens then, you know, you've got the standards and expectations. You can't hold anyone to that because you don't have people coming in that can handle the business that's there or the people that are in your database that your existing agents aren't handling. So guess what? The patients run the asylum. I mean, pretty simple, right? Just a figure of speech, okay? Now, number two, retention, right? The number one way to retain people, and I'm not dehumanizing the process, I'm just telling you this, is your existing agents, that culture, seeing a subculture of people coming in, seeing that someone is going to come in and do the activities they aren't doing, right? The number one way to motivate someone is for them to see someone new come in and do the things they're not doing, they've been expected to do and possibly pass them up. See, Maslow's hierarchy of needs comes into play there in the psychology of human beings and leadership is that we all wanna fit in. Well, when we see someone new come in that's doing the activities that we're expected to do, that we're not doing, what we're going to do unconsciously is typically we're going to go to those activities because we don't want someone to take our place. It's just human nature. It's a part of that human nature of the desire for validation, period. It's really, really simple. The other problem too, if you're not recruiting, if you're not recruiting, you are consistently. What you're doing is you end up keeping people around too long and that kills a, your, your lead follow-up and lead conversion, because if you're keeping people around too long, someone that's around too long isn't following your framework, it's proven. Number two, they control the narrative. The people that you keep around too long obviously need to not be there. And so are they saying positive things in your environment? Of course not. No, people typically don't take personal responsibility. And I know this is a sweeping commentary, but stay with me, you've seen this. See, the moment that you continually bring recruits in no matter what, just like you continually bring leads in no matter what, just like an agent, an independent agent, continually prospects for listings no matter what. What happens is you change the narrative because A, number one, you're not going to keep the negativity around because you're bringing new blood in, okay, that's excited about an opportunity that maybe you onboard indoctrinate Okay, you culturize differently. See, don't recruit to your culture because your culture has problems. Every culture has problems. Recruit to where you're going, not where you're at. See, another dinosaur suggestion that leaders who haven't been in the trenches operating over a sustained period of time, okay, they're gonna use some cliche out of a book that says, recruit to your culture. Well, do this for me. Write down all the things in your culture that you wanna change right now. Well, then why would you recruit to that? Recruit to what you want things to be with this subculture that's coming in. So in simple terms, here's what it comes down to. The number one regret, the number one thing looking back that leaders wish they would have done is stayed absolutely, ruthlessly, relentlessly committed to and consistent to their recruiting. It impacts everything. You can screw up everything. If you get recruiting right, you're going to win, period, hands down. People want to be a part of something that other people keep joining. Human psychology, are you thinking that way? Well, the people I have, you know, they might get upset. Well, they're scarce. Are you a scarce leader? Obviously you are if you are allowing that sort of narrative to go around your environment. So as always, KFR, that's the thing. Well, we need to fix some things, but we've got to slow down on our recruiting. Oh good, right? When, when was the last time everything was always fixed? Hope you found it really valuable, KFR.